laugh sounds like naturally. <laughs> <laughs> you do that now. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome mm. to Witchfinger Horror Podcast. My name is Yasmina. To my right is Morgan. Hello. To my left is Megan. Hello. And uh, tonight we're watching Tales from the Crypt. Demon, Demon Night. Night. Ooh, this is very exciting. What, 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 what uh, the 90s. What a wonderful decade. It's different than the 80s, obviously, because, I mean, it's a new decade. Duh. The 90s is the decade of trying really hard. Yeah. Totally. Like, music was, like, over the top, and clothes were over the top, and movies were, like, like badly over the top. Yeah. Like, yeah. especially you know? for horror, because it's, like, 80s were, like, there's a certain thing about them that's, like, they weren't trying too hard, they were just trying to get by yeah. a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Like, with, like, low budgets and rubber monsters and shit, but, like, the 90s, it's like, we gotta take it to a new level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's, like... Bigger <laughs> boobs. Yeah. Bigger titties, blonder hair, fucking... Explosions, war. but, yeah. like... Like, we're not really there yet with the explosions. They're just, like, overdone. CGI and CGI. Because yeah. they're like, oh, we have this new technology. and Yeah. Superimposed fire. That's oh, always man. fun. Oh, my Ooh. God. Oh, my God. I love Super it. Superimposed fire. Yeah. Definitely. That's, the, that's, yeah. A, that's a genre that should exist in film. Like, like bad superimposed like fire. Fucking like, fucking Birdemic. Movies. Yeah. Like, Birdemic Ooh. would be in that, that category. Oh, man. Yeah, but, the 90s. It was yeah, good. Yeah, what a time to be alive. And we were there. We yeah. definitely were. And we miss it. I miss it. I miss... Yeah. I miss it. The 90s was my time to shine. I was born in 86, so I was a kid through the 80s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 90s was my, my real shit. Yeah. So this episode is all about Megan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't let her Fuck it, you old fart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I have a confession to make. Um, I always thought that the Crypt Keeper was a woman. What? You are fucking what, out of your mind yeah. right now. That, no, like, the 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 voice... Keeper, no, that the actual corpse was a woman. No. I, When I was growing up, when this show was on TV, I thought it was a woman. And literally, I discovered that it was a man, like, like, like in my notes, like, this week. No. Guys, I always thought it was a woman. Seriously? I'm fucking totally serious. That's pretty funny. Totally fucking That's serious. also kind of um, unheard of. Is it? Mm-hmm. No. Yes. Uh-huh. It must be. You don't be. think it looks like a woman? No. With the long hair? The creepy, stringy, long hair? He's I like, always look at my cheekbones. <laughs> He's... It's a woman. I always thought it was. I always thought, for some reason, if it was a woman, they'd put something with like an S at the end of it, like... Duchess, or like the, yeah. you know, like oh, the, yeah. the crypt keep trying. I was like, whore? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, whores? <laughs> Put an S on it, whores. Yeah. Whores. <laughs> <laughs> like, they make it really, really regal to be the crypt keeper. Yeah, that's true. Well, did you, Morgan, watch the show a lot growing up? Yep, I did. I remember watching the show. I remember the movies. He Obviously, ogled was- women, not to say that women don't ogle women, but he was pretty boy. Eat. I always thought it was a girl. I have no idea why. Maybe it was the voice. Maybe because you just wanted him to be a girl. Maybe. I don't know. It, it's really weird. I always thought... But it's kind of like in the same regard that like I always thought that Getty Lee was a woman. Yeah, well, I think everybody like, did. Like his voice when I, in the 80s when I was growing up and I heard Rush, I was like, that's a woman singing. And then when I heard that it was a man, I was disappointed. <laughs> I mean, he's got a great voice, but I was like, God damn it. <laughs> that's fair. Oh, Oh, and then they play Filter. The soundtrack. Oh, dude. The, the soundtrack, soundtrack is fucking movie, awesome. It's like all the 90s. Like fucking Ministry, Pantera. The scene where she's like, spoiler alert, got the like electrodes on his nipples. Yeah, and he's yeah. like fucking, fucking Cemetery Gates is playing. Dude, I oh know. Oh my god, I, I love know. it. There's uh, Megadeth, Sepultura. This Filter song, though, is pivotal to the mid-90s. Oh my god, this yes. This Filter song, Hey, Ma- hey Man, Nice Shot was in so many fucking movies. And then they came out with that one album with that fucking you picture. You want to take my song. Oh, God. And utter bullshit. Oh, no. And it was like, well, I'm done with Filter, and like just like the rest of the world. But that song, though, Hey Man, Nice Shot, like, holy shit, that song is so, so good. It was on the Crow 2 soundtrack. Yeah, they got a lot of fucking play yeah. out of it, actually. That whole album was pretty badass, actually. I had it. For sure. Yeah. Well, Demon Knight came out in 95, and um, 
it was on Friday uh, the 13th. Yeah, they purposely released yeah. it on Friday the 13th. January 13th. Uh, I think that's really smart. I'm sorry. I'm eating nuts. And I- <laughs> she, she, like, literally right before we started recording, she's like, do you got any nuts? And I'm like, yeah, but why? <laughs> no, it's really <laughs> random. Do I want to look at like, them? <laughs> I got some I'm- nuts for you. Oh. But for real, I do. They're cashews. <laughs> Enjoy. They're Enjoy delicious. my... I like to call cashews cat shoes. <laughs> I've never thought of that! They are kind of like little shoes. They are. They're but like little um, clogs. Smaller than a cat. I would say more like a mouse or a gerbil. Mouse clogs. Also, I'd like to say that before we started recording, <laughs> I thought Morgan was fucking with me. <laughs> when she, I said that I've never seen Sen of a Woman. And she says, well, it's a movie about a blind, a blind man who <laughs> smells women. No, he doesn't know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, ha, ha, that's Uh-oh. funny. And you were like, no, I'm being serious. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> There's no way that's what that movie's about. I had to, well, like, ask Megan. It's like, not, but it's not about, about, it's not a story of a man who goes around smelling people. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if it's not, like, that's because a pretty funny joke. They, <laughs> I like your joke. Thank you. I almost cried. Holy fuck. Oh <laughs> um, well, uh, so Demon Knight um, had uh, a pretty tumultuous period of time between when it was written and when it was actually made. It's actually pretty bonkers. I had no idea. Um, but it was actually, it was written in 1987 before the show even fucking came out. Yeah. And um, it was intended to be the second part of a trilogy um but after it came out they were like okay let's make the second one a zombie movie called dead easy yeah set in new orleans and then the third one was supposed to be a movie called body count it just makes me think of like the band yeah body mm-hmm. count body count fuck yeah ice tea fuck yeah man body count like remember when they made a comeback like a few years yeah. ago like it was still badass cop killer how did i miss that uh it was just like Five years ago, maybe or four years ago. Yeah, they did put they put it in a, a new album. Yeah, I remember. yeah, yeah. Body count. I think they did a no tour. Shit. It was fucking fucking serious shit. Yeah, man. dude. Nice. Body count is awesome. Yes, yeah. nice. nice. But yeah, so apparently, with with that script, originally, Tom Holland was supposed to he. It came across his desk, and he was supposed to direct it. And obviously, we've talked about Tom a lot mm-hmm. uh, because he did Fright Night, and he also you know did Child's Play as well. Um, and he was supposed to do it after he was done with Child's Play. Um, and he actually had even hired, like, an effects team to do all the preliminary sketches and everything like that. So it was actually, like, going into production. And I don't really know what ended up happening there. Like, in my research, I didn't see anything that, that said why it didn't happen. Maybe they just couldn't get funding or whatever. But then it went to, uh, the Pumpkinhead screenwriter... Uh, Mark Carducci, which is funny because we also have talked about Pumpkinhead before. Um, and he had that for a number of years uh, before it was given to Mary Lambert, who directed Pet Cemetery, And she was going to do it too. Um, and she apparently had some radical ideas for the script, including uh, casting African-American as Breaker to like create the theme that like oppressed people of the earth were also its saviors. So she was going to kind of doctor it up. But then she directed Pet Cemetery 2, and because it bombed, no one wanted to give her money to do the movie. Which is bullshit, because I that actually really like Pet Cemetery 2 a lot. Yeah, that's some, that's some kind of bullshit, but I think I it's know, all it's about politics. money. Politics, yeah, it's, it's, it's bullshit. Just... Politics, right? So they're like, bullshit oh, well. Hollywood politics. But it's like, but she also did the first Pet Cemetery, which was a big fucking deal. So, yeah. Like, I don't understand. It's like. One failure and it's gone. Yeah, exactly. Oh, not even it's a like, failure. Not yeah. even a failure. It just shows how fleeting Hollywood can really be. It's yeah. like, you can be on an awesome ride and maybe you make one misstep and one movie out of like five that you've done doesn't do great. And they're like, sorry, you're out. Yeah, just take everything, all your prospects. Yeah, make. it's fucking bullshit. So, so then it got to Full Moon Features. Good old Charles Band. Charles we love Full him. Moon Band. Charles fucking Band. So when I read that, I was pretty excited about that. But, you know, there was a lot of um, uncertain finances, I suppose. Yeah. Like, there just wasn't the money there. So it ended up at Silver Pictures. So I suppose this is a Silver Pictures Yes, yeah, Joel film. Silver was ended up mm-hmm. taking it. Um, because at the time, I guess he had a lot of power. And then, so... He, he was the one that optioned it as the second of the three. Right, yeah. But then when the script kind of came together, they were like, no, this movie needs to go first. And then there were two scripts at one point. Yeah. One with demons and one without, 
when I first read that, I was like, well, how can there be a movie called Demon Knight that doesn't have demons? But they were actually demons, but they just looked human. Yeah, well, that's kind of like how Billy that's Zane is, like, evil out. and yeah. he Yeah, <laughs> to have, like, Billy Zane is present in the movie, but so are fucking demons. Yeah, so, like, and they look amazing yeah. imagine you can't have a movie called demon knight without a single like actual like spooky demon in it it makes yeah. me think of the um the dudes from the matrix movies the guy mm. who plays v for vendetta what's his fucking name who plays all the guy the men in the black suit yeah yeah, the yeah. Matrix oh movies. hugo weaving yeah. and they just um like replicate over and over yeah. and over so mm. it's just a bunch of them that's what yeah. i picture for this just a bunch of dudes who look like the exact coats. same mm. in like yeah. black suits and that has just been like done and it's lame yeah, the way mm -hmm. that this movie ended up is perfect. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. perfect. And like we were just talking about this before we started recording. Me and Megan have seen this movie like fifty times each, and Morgan had not seen it since it came out. Oh yeah, like it's and been you rewatched it. This yeah. you told me that, and I had no idea when we were talking about doing a '90s movie. I suggested three, and Demon Knight was one of them. And then we we're all like, okay, decided to do Demon Knight. But I had, I honestly just in my mind just assumed that you had seen mm -hmm. it as much as us. And then Same. when you told me that you were watching it a couple nights ago and you're like, yeah, I haven't seen it since like it came out. Since I was like, the fucking 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Like we've been friends for like 20 years. Like how did I not know this? And also, what? <laughs> what? Like this movie is so, it's so good. It's just like Megan was saying earlier that it's just, it's a perfect movie even if you just want to put something on in the background. Yeah. You know, like where well, you just like don't want to pay attention and if you want to pay attention and make somebody watch it for the first time yeah. or something. But it's, it's such a fun, wild, entertaining ride of a movie. Yeah. It's, it is, it's a good horror movie. I it's wish I It's a good 90s it. horror movie. Yeah. For sure. There's yeah. lots of shitty fucking bad ones. There's lots of bad movies in general, but this movie, it's a good movie. To me, this is what, introduced me to Jada Pinkett. Yeah. Yeah, same. I had never seen her in anything before. I and I had personally didn't notice her in anything too much after that either. But maybe mm. it was just my taste in movies. I missed a bunch of things that she probably did, you yeah. know? But I just feel like this to me is like her standout, like this when I think of her. Immediately I go Demon Knight. Yeah, same. Because she plays like the most badass motherfucker yeah. ever. Yeah, well, yeah. apparently yeah. her... Like, it makes sense that she wouldn't have been on your radar because she only had smaller parts until mm -hmm. she was in The Nutty Professor, and that was because that was a really big movie. Yeah. That was her, like, breakout role or whatever yeah. with Eddie Murphy. But, like, un before that, she was in, like, I think, like, Menace to Society. Yeah. Oh, dude, which, yeah. You know and what I mean? Like, like, I, see, I, I definitely, like, know her from Menace to Society. Like, for some reason, I don't know why, like, I just always watch that movie. When I was a kid, like, that movie is fucking, like, Is that the one where they rob a bank? A bunch of girls rob a bank? Mm -hmm. Wasn't she in a movie where a whole bunch of girls rob yes, a bank? Yes, that was the one with Queen Latifah. Yes. And, fuck, what was it called? Set it off. Smith. Yes. Set okay. it off. Yes. And that one, I think, was more early 2000s, was it not? Yeah, uh, 96. Oh, no, was it really? Ooh, wow. Yeah. I feel like... I'm in a time warp. I don't know. I could have swore it was later than that. I feel like there was a few movies that came out that were centered around girls doing some badass yeah. shit that I might have it confused. Because I feel Time like... Time-wise, I feel like I might have Feminism it thrived in the 90s a oh, lot. Oh, girls, so many bands, so many female artists uh, Bikini in the 90s. Kill, Man. Like, Luna Chicks. It was a The four non The 90s was a Tracy time for Chapman? women. Tracy yeah. Chapman? Yeah. The fucking Cranberries. Like, yeah. just having a little, like, lead well because if you women. think about it kind of like the 80s like where women were kind of objectified. seen as yeah yeah like they were objectified they were seen as just like big titty like even though like final girls were heroic in their own way um and slashers and stuff like that um but in the 90s i feel like women stepped it up a little bit and they were just like our voices are going to be heard and you're I, going to fucking hear us out i think a lot of it too was i feel like the 90s was a breed of women who are like yeah, you're going to hear us, but also we're not fucking pretty all the time. Like, there's a lot of, like, grungy women who came yeah. out like, I don't fucking shave my armpits. You got a problem with that? Like, the 90s Tomboys. was a big yeah. tomboy. Yeah, huge. Plaid, like, shirts mm -hmm. and jeans. Uh, it was incredible. Yeah. That's not I don't how have I to conform to your 90s. beauty standards. Fuck you. Yeah. Hashtag 90s. Ooh. Hashtag 90s. Not me. But, um, I guess, so there's Demon Knight. So there is... A trilogy, which is strange because I don't know if you guys did a little bit of research, but um, so Bor obviously Bordello of Blood, we'll talk about that later, was the second movie, but there is a third movie. I know it's called Ritual, but I never seen it. I've shit. never, never even uh, heard of it, and I was reading about it, and it wasn't actually intended to be the third. 
um, at all until after they actually finished shooting. And then the producers were just like, oh, let's just put the Tales from the Crypt title on it. And then they added the Crypt Keeper scenes afterwards. And then you can apparently tell the difference of like the graininess and really? um, yeah the like camera the quality, of the their quality is different. like very different between the two but uh the plot actually sounds really interesting um but it's got jennifer gray like really? from dirty dancing and craig sheffer the guy from nightbreed oh. and tim curry what yeah no yeah tim what? curry yeah, it came out in 2002. Um, if I ever saw it for sale for like a dollar, I'd probably buy for $1. it. One dollar. Yeah. One dollar, Bob. I would is, just watch it just for the story. Is there the story motives? sounded like, yeah, the story actually sounded pretty cool. Like Jennifer Grey plays, no, she plays a nurse and she gets fired because one of her patients dies. So then she gets a job in this kind like American Mary do you remember American yep, Mary it was sure. kind of like that a little bit like She's so like she gets butcher, like yeah she crazy, gets a job crazy lady that's like this uh un, in disclo- like undisclosed hospital that does like illegal surgeries and shit like that and I think demons are somehow involved uh I don't remember but I was like surprised that the story was actually pretty good but it kind of sucks that they just slapped the tales from the crypt just to try to market it or whatever but um, they were like, we, we were, we promised you guys a trilogy, 10 years to, I know, like, who cares? Like, everybody was happy with Demon Knight. Maybe some were happy with Bordello Blood. Just leave it at that. But, um, I guess the producers of Demon Knight, uh, they were also interested in making, uh, one of Tarantino's scripts. Yeah, From Dust Till Dawn was um, apparently Yeah, From Dust Till Dawn was considered to be the Tales from the Crypt first movie. And also Peter Jackson's The Frighteners. Yeah was also considered to be Demon Knight or whatever, like the uh, first, like, Tales from the Crypt. Interesting. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty crazy. When I was reading about it, I didn't, I had no idea that it, it uh, years, it took years to make this movie. And it just kept on, like, moving. Like, the script just kept on moving from different yeah, people's desks. Yeah, it is desks. really weird. And uh, they even, like, they wanted Cameron Diaz to play. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I read a bunch of shit Jerry about Lynn. Joel Silver and how much of a, kind of a disgusting pig he was about that, Really? Too. Yeah. Um, so, apparently, the director, uh, Ernest Dickerson, uh, was doing, like, a Demon Knight, like, anniversary thing, like, kind of recently, I think, in Chicago. And he was telling stories about uh, his involvement in the movie, but also, like, trying to get it made. And apparently, he had gone to Joel Silver and really, really was like, Jada Pinkett has got it. I want to cast this woman. And he was like, yeah, but does she have big tits? Like, literally, that's Ew. apparently what he said. Because he wanted Cameron Diaz in her first starring role in a movie because I think at that point she'd only been in The Mask. And she was kind of like yeah. a secondary like yeah. kind of character or whatever. But yeah, he just apparently, like, some of the shit that he was saying was just, like, he made it really difficult. And he also wanted, in the scene where uh, Jada Pinkett's character and uh, Billy Zane are in the that room with all the beds and, like, yep. the, the... The very sexy scene. Yeah, the sexy scene. Like, <laughs> they were, he was like, why don't they just fuck? I want to see him, her fuck a demon, blah, blah, blah. Just, that like, would have being ruined really it. crass. Exactly, like, there's she a tension there. She has such a strong there. character yeah. in those. Yeah, yeah. And the tension is supposed to be there, and the fact that she resists shows her strength, yeah. right? Like, that's yeah, part exactly. of it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it just, like, some of the shit that he apparently had to go through in order to get this movie made and, like, fought really hard to make it what... It is now typical Hollywood bullshit. Like, oh, I want tits and ass, blah blah blah. Let's have some sex scenes, make it cheap or whatever. That makes me think of that fucking uh, what's his name, the chopping mall director. You know, we're saying that it's like corny titty stuff, but the majority of Tales from the Crypt itself is like corny tits. Oh yeah, big time. <clears throat> yeah. I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm so glad Cameron Diaz is not in this movie. Holy fuck. Uh, yeah, no, I could oh. not picture her. Like, Jada Pinkett killed this shit. Yeah. yeah, I can picture Cameron Diaz as a badass like that. I can picture her as, like, a girl in, like, short shorts running around, like... Being like, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. Like, Charlie's Angel, Angel. Angels or yeah. whatever. Oh, my gosh. I made the mistake of watching one of those movies one time. And it was, like, with a dude. We were, like, so we wanted to pick something easy to watch. Light. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> The only thing I remember is Crispin Glover. Oh, Robert. it's like, you can't even watch this shit. They're, they're like, jumping off giant buildings doing, like, backflips, like, 
like Charlie's Angels. Like there's no, a new Charlie's oh, Angels movie no, coming out. No. They're remaking it again. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh here's the sexy blood. fucking. Yeah, with Cemetery Gates playing. Yeah, fucking when she's sizzling, sizzling his nipples. Yeah. This guy, by the way, though. Thomas Hayden Church. He is a uh, total creep bag. Right. Nothing. Roach. Li- nothing like the '90s ah. to like put a guy like that in a mesh shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, this guy, know, right? this guy is attractive. And then he went on to do wings, <laughs> right? Yeah, Fuck yeah. And this he was, um, cool. he was also in uh, Tombstone. Your uh, was he in Tombstone uh, too? Morgan's sand boyfriend. There's actually Stanley. a couple yeah. of uh, yeah, Tombstone things going there's on. There's a couple here. Tombstone things going on. Um, he's there's a, also... a few Bill Paxton things actually because oh. uh, William Sadler was also in Trespass with Ice T. Body oh. Count and Bill Paxton. Nice. What the fuck? All sorts, all sorts yeah. as usual in this movie. Director, producer, actor, yeah. connections. Yeah, there's a lot of connections yeah. in this movie I for love sure. That. Yeah, me too. I, like that. I you know what? You know why I like that? Because I imagine when they get when they all get to work together again, that it's like this uh, friendship bond. Like I just imagine yeah. them being like, Oh, well, I get to shoot the movie with you again. We and already like, know oh, each other. We are friends. We are friends. We're having a good time. We're <laughs> friends. Fucking awesome. <laughs> I love it. Um, but Thomas Hayden Church is also in um, a great movie called Sideways with Paul Giamatti. Oh, you've talked about it. And this I love Paul Giamatti. I will watch anything with that man. And um, That's the wine movie. Yeah. yeah I remember really watching good, that man. Movie, nope. And he is in uh, Spider Man 3, which I totally forgot about. He plays Sandman. Oh. Spider Man 3, is that the ones with uh, Tobey Maguire? Yes. I've never seen those ones. Are they worth watching? Sam Raimi directed them. The older ones? Yeah, they're they're great. With Tobey Maguire? Yeah. 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 Okay. I just never did. I to was me, just curious. like, that's, like, I feel like they've made Spider-Man so many times that, like, to me, the, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man ones are Spider-Man. Like, yeah. that's my Spider-Man. Well, because at this point, even since then, there's been two. two more. There's two more. What? I'm a Tom Holland girl. There's, like, that Tom Holland guy. I'm him, and that, for sure. that right? fucking, uh... Oh, God, he's another I don't British know. guy. They're, isn't he? they're an Andrew something. Yeah, Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Yeah. That's the only reason why yeah. I know Who that guy's name. That? Uh, exactly. The only reason why I know that guy's name is because he's in that new movie that the director from It Follows did. His new movie called Under the Silver Lake. Mm. I've heard amazing so things. Why? Yeah, I've heard amazing Whoa. things about it. It's on Prime, so it's on my watch list. Um, but Thomas Hayden Church, I just love saying his name. Um, he is also uh, in the new upcoming Hellboy, and oh, I have to mention good. that he's also in. Uh, if you really want to watch a funny girly movie, I highly recommend Easy A. Have you ever seen Easy A? Is he the principal? No, yeah, he's the teacher. He's the teacher. That movie no, is hilarious. It's a good it's, one. It's actually like one of those girly movies from like the 2000s is it like mean girls yes okay. um it's not as no. it's no. not but don't, it's like, like in that uh, like it's genre? in that genre though but it's, it's actually pretty funny it's what's um, her name who's hilarious emma stone yeah oh yeah, yeah. Okay. it's actually really fucking funny it's amazing but uh no it ain't no mean girls okay. <laughs> mean girls is uh in a class by uh, an incredible fucking movie mean girls and bridesmaids to me are the same funny yeah for you sure. think so? Uh-huh, I think, I think so. Mean Girls is funnier than Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids was good. I liked it. Mean Girls is just when I don't she know, shits man. in the dress in the middle of the street. Yeah, she's like, it's happening. It's happening. I'm How shitting you... on the street. I'm shitting when on the street. When she's on the airplane, fuck oh it. My oh my god, god. drunk out of her face. I know. Love it. I'm sure. here in the party. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a pretty funny movie, but I I think the Mean Girls is funnier. It's just got like more r- ridiculous lines because of Tim Meadows. I feel like oh, and Amy po- Amy Poehler. I'm not oh. like a regular mom. I'm like a cool mom. Guys, sorry, we have to oh, stop. Billy oh, Zane. Billy Zane is doing his cowboy freak out outside oh, the God. house where he starts to like put yeah. the shit on them, put the curse on them. Yeah, and he's like the oh, demon don't, fucking oh, shit. Are we just gonna let's just get into Billy Zane right God, now? He's, I mean, he might I as well. He's, he's like, attractive. oh my, he's. Like, Yo, he's attractive. <laughs> That's a nice way of <laughs> Let's just start. That's that was a respectful way to that say that. That was yes. a very nice, respectful <laughs> way of saying that Billy Zane is the hottest motherfucking man alive. <laughs> like, oh, man. <laughs> he's attractive. Really? He is. Understatement of the century. Right? Uh, yeah, so we're going to be jizzing all over Billy Zane yeah. in this fucking There's episode. There's been a few episodes where I don't even know why he's come up and we've, like, jizzed all over him. Oh, no, it was because you wanted to have the uh, Punisher and Phantom sandwich. I don't, I don't even remember Do that. Do you that remember thing. that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, like, Megan was going off because, like, the she loves the bald head and all that shit. Yeah, you don't remember the fucking Punisher oh, it's coming back Phantom to me now. Sandwich? Yeah, it's coming it's back to me. 
Well, oh, but just wait, just wait, just wait. Oh, the demons. So the demons before, that are coming yeah, out of the Before we get to Billy Zane, the demons, like the, the way that they did this demon transformation morph thing is like, like so Like they come fucking... out of the like glow blood from the ground. And, and like, look at the end disgusting. result. It's just the hair for me is what I think the detail that makes it the most is how they applied that like loose hair yeah, like, it hair. makes him look, like, a, just that much more disgusting. Yeah! Yeah, the special effects are incredible, actually. Yeah, When same. they're being born. They actually, when they're, like, little, they kind of look like little, you know when Pumpkinhead is being born? Yeah, and he's, yeah. like, kind of got that weird, like, it's, like, long and creepy, like, kind of demon face, but also, like, kind of, like, fetal skin. Yeah. Style. I also oh. love that there's women and men uh, demons like yeah. the female fucking they're wearing hoops like they're wearing fucking earrings yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, love I love the glowing eyes yeah. I love the everything lighting about is really it. good honestly them. like monsters just do it for me I love creatures I love monsters I love demons and uh, yeah just the special effects they truly truly shine in this fucking movie um, the guy who did the special effects uh, his name is uh, Kevin Yeager, and we've talked about him as well. And he uh, also made the Crypt Keeper. Um, he also does Freddy Krueger's makeup. Um, he also did the special effects for The Hidden, which is a fucking awesome sci-fi movie from the 90s with Kyle MacLachlan. And um, he also worked on... Uh, <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah, that's a good one. When we were talking about doing a '90s movie, I su- one of my suggestions was Rumpelstiltskin. That movie is not as good as Demon Knight, but it's just it's it's so entertaining. And uh, so he also worked on Bordello of Blood, and he also did the special effects for Face Off. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Which is hilarious because uh, that's our next After Dark episode. I know, it's incredible. There, and there are a few of those weird coincidences as well. Yeah. Because CCH Pounder is, is also in both movies in face as well. Off. So we picked like the perfect duo. I know. Like, this shit's By happening. Chance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm thinking oh, of something else. <laughs> I wasn't looking at Megan when she sneezed, so that startled me. She's like, Your... nuts all over the place. Let me guys. Let me tell you guys something about <laughs> Megan. Uh, she is the easiest startled person I know, and it's starting to rub off on me. Like it's just earlier. She, I don't know what you did, and you scared me, and you're like, "Ha ha! I gotcha! I gotcha! Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha bitch! Yeah, I got the, gotcha, bitch! Gotcha, <laughs> bitch!" <laughs> um. But uh, Brock w- Winkless is the man who is the That's puppeteer. An unfortunate name. Winkless, yes. Uh, <laughs> he was the puppeteer. He who controls the Crypt Keeper and the demons and Demon Knight. And he also is the puppeteer who controls Chucky. Speaking of that, I tried. I tried super hard. And I can only kind of sort of get into the new Outer Limits. You mean Twilight Zone? Twilight Zone. Oh, I haven't seen it. There are certain episodes where I'm like, that was a good episode, but I've seen a few episodes where I straight up was like, I just watched this for that, like it's an hour long episode, right? So is it like hit or miss? Like summer for good, me, summer bad? For me, Morgan was surprised that I felt that way. So did you enjoy Twilight Zone every episode? Did you watch it? Like the new ones? Mm-hmm. No, I haven't I seen haven't it. Oh, it. I thought no. you for sure would have. No, no, I haven't. The first I remember one, the old Sweet the old Jesus, ones. I promise Dave. He's like, I'm like, let's watch this show. It's going to be amazing. It's a remake of a great blah, blah, blah. He knows. So we're watching the show and it's going on and on and on. And we're like, okay, I'm like, you got to like hold out, babe. I'm like, it's coming. Like a good part's coming. And the, and end, the end, you know how the Twilight Zone is supposed to end on this like crescendo yeah. of like, dun, 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 yeah. reveal. Yeah. It ended on like a, oh, okay. And then like the credits came up and we were like, oh, fuck. Oh, what? really? Like it could have been huh. a half hour episode. Have you seen? Thing. But then I saw an episode where it like blew my face off. But then I saw another episode where again, I'm waiting for, it's a drawn out dramatic you know what I mean? Before, when I watched them, mm-hmm. like the black and white episodes, it was like almost more to the point. They were shorter, I feel like. They yeah. certainly weren't an hour, for God's sake. Anthologies are typically like that, though. There's always some good, some bad episodes. Yeah. Like, they're not going to be all amazing. True. Uh, but I think but because I a lot of them yet. now have technology to work with and stuff, I don't like those episodes. Yeah. Like, Black Mirror, I tried and I didn't love. Like, technology based horror for me is like. I can't. She loves Black Mirror. Yeah, so uh, I people haven't even do. Seen it. Really? No. I okay, still let seen me it. tell you, the new season not so great, and also only three episodes. That's not even a season. That's, That's weird. Fucking stupid. That's beyond but, y'all. But the first uh, couple of seasons, actually, I think you would really like them. Um, it's 
thought provoking. It's it. A lot of them are like technology based, but in a way that's not intangible yet. Like it's like a possible future, like ten years from now, where like yeah, like stuff like Facebook, like and the likes and stuff. Yeah, no face off. (laughs) You're so (laughs) primed. You're so primed. Um, yeah, like, so it's not, it's not, like, a totally distant future, so it's, like, like, the possibility of, like, these types of things and how, like, they actually affect society now, like, I don't know, it's, it's a, it's thought-provoking. Um, I think you'd really like it. Yeah, I've, I've been told that I would like it, I honestly just don't have time to watch a new show, and if I do, I'm gonna watch Chernobyl. Because yes. yo, you need I know. to fucking watch that I know, shit. I know, I yes. know. I had to watch What We Do in the Shadows, and then I caught up with Sunny, and, uh, and then I'm just, like, really busy, but I really want to just, like, one day when I have a day off where I have, like, nothing to do and, like, no writing to do, I will binge Chernobyl in, like, one day. You have to. It's um, so incredible. But I wanted to go back to Brock Winkless, the, uh, puppeteer for just a second. Um, he is a partner with, uh, Rick Baker in the Stan Winston yeah. studio, um, which is, like, one of the best special effects studios out there. Um, but, I'm sorry, so Brock actually died of neuro- neurological complications, and he suffered loss of muscle control over 15 years, like, from being a puppeteer. Really? Yeah. But he was, <gasps> um, horrible. actually, um like an acclaimed puppeteer in like the history of film because uh he was one of the only people who had the best coordination between move like mouth movements and speech really wow. yeah so like he had like an uncanny ability to move the mouths of the puppets like so perfectly timed with the voice oh really crazy. so i thought that was kind of neat that is very fucking cool that's um, too bad that he's gone. Yeah. That's kind of sad. Yeah. That's a little sad. Um, I just want to mention, too, that I'm not sure about this Tales from the Crypt uh, show now, because I think we had talked about this before. I could have sworn yeah. that there was a new one coming out and yeah. that Kevin Yeager was part of it. But I think, originally, M. Night Shyamalan was supposed to do it. Shyamalan ding dong. Shyamalan ding dong. Shyamalan ding dong. Guy up to these I days. Well. <laughs> oh, he did the. <laughs> oh, and you're like, huh, wait a minute. Oh, I know. He did the uh, glass movie. He did that movie that oh, just yeah. came out. Yeah. We talked about it. Disappointing for me. Yeah, it was the one with uh, James McAvoy and who I love uh, and adore and can do no wrong. Who's in fucking Doctor Sleep? That's coming up. <laughs> Shake your mug at me. Shake my wine at you. <laughs> Control yourself, woman. Fuck. Shit's getting wild in here, friends. Oh my yeah. shit. Okay, getting what wild. were we talking about, though? Billy Zane? That's what, yeah, that, we just literally went on like a 20 minute tangent away from Billy Zane. Which is that's not Zane. Good because that's Billy so Zane. zany. I know. Ho, ho. <laughs> Billy, Billy Zane, Zane is, uh, yeah, Billy um, Zane. we've talked about Billy Zane a lot, uh, mainly because, um, I'd say Megan loves Billy Zane. I mean, who doesn't? I mean, who doesn't? He, but yeah. every time he comes up, we're always like, Megan loves Billy Zane. He's tall he's and he's a vampire. Bald. Like, he still looks the same. <laughs> awesome. The obvious. He's, he's tall and he's bald. <laughs> What do you look like, ma'am? Well. <laughs> oh, so you're talking about Billy Zane. Oh, right. right. Oh, Billy Zane. Gotcha. Shit. Okay, he still looks good. Like, he put on some weight well, and he's yeah. got some some gray, but he still looks See, pretty fucking gray. good. Okay, like, I have something to say, though. So, his next project, he's playing Marlon Brando. Okay, that is so weird that you just said that because I was creeping his Instagram the other he day might, and I was like, I he's starting to kind of look he's like got him. That. I think he's going to do a really good job. Yes, Not is. that he's like a bloated, egotistical fucking maniac or anything. But Marlon what... Brando wasn't always. No, he oh, wasn't. But he was, Marlon Brando was like, beautiful Marlon Brando and then was something so went hot. wrong. But I think that now that Billy Zane is... is uh, the age that he is, I think, with some prosthetics and shit, he's yeah, gonna do I can really see it. I can see the similarity. I can as well. For sure. So, I'm sorry. There's a movie oh, coming out about Marlon Brando. Yes. That's and be he's playing Marlon Brando. Brando. Because one of my favorite Marlon Brando movies is The Wild One. Um, he is so hot in this movie. And Morgan, you would agree, because the whole movie, he basically... he invented the cool leather jacket look because of the wild one i watched that movie and i was like 
Hey. <laughs> like, holy bop, shit. Bop, bop. I like them London I know. Yes. <laughs> like, holy fuck, Marlon Brando was so hot in the wild one. But now that when I was looking at his Instagram and I was like, holy shit, I can kind of see a, a Marlon Brando similarity. And then I was going to bring it up and then you said it. And yeah. I was like, whoa. I know. What a fucking. <laughs> What a weird and balloon. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> That's shit. in Billy Zane. Oh, don't talk about what's inside Billy Zane. Oh, I'm talking about what's inside Billy Zane. What's inside Billy Zane? Um, his sister, Elisa, Wait. is an actress, and I did not know that that was his sister. It's the girl from The Worst Nightmare on Elm Street, in my opinion, part six. The one really? where he, like, oh, yeah. Oh, wait, are you talking about, like... No, like, I didn't know that... Oh, I, I, thought thought you were like, my I thought you were, like... like oh, really? That's, that's not a bad one. Movie. Yes, it is. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. And she's the... She's the main girl the, like, from parts from Freddy's Dead. Yeah. Oh, really? Does the... Oh, my God. I can't even I see it. Yeah. I'm picturing her face, and I, like, can't even see the resemblance. That's crazy. No, they don't... They actually don't look, like, at all. Really? And it's, like, his, like, f- like full sister, like... Yeah, like, I don't think they're half-sister or anything like that. Weird. But I remember the first time I saw Billy Zane, it was in Back to the Future. Oh, yes. I had to literally look up photos, and I watched Back Back to the Future not four months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had to Google that shit when I saw that, and I was like, there's no fucking way he's in Back to the Future. Let me just see this. Let me just, sorry, I'm looking at Billy Zane's sister. Okay, you know, they have... Big beautiful eyes. Greek. Yeah, his eyelashes are like silly, dude. I know it's a Greek. I think it's a Greek yeah. thing. For oh sure. yeah, Le, the Greek are a beautiful people for the most part. They got these features usually, you know. These, They're like, like the gods and goddesses. Yes, mm, yes. <laughs> it looks like a fucking Greek god. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Actually, know what I think about it. You know why? Because I pictured his body on a horse for some reason. I was picturing like a centaur. <laughs> Greek gods, and immediately I'm like, oh, he morphs into like this this beast. Is that like one of your weird fetishes, like centaur fetish? It is now. It just came to me. Fuck yeah! <laughs> in this centaur moment, fetish. Woo! In this I bet. I bet that's a thing. I bet that's a real thing. Yeah. You know um, what's a real thing? Fucking sorry, Morgan. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I thought you were gonna keep talking about centaurs and people's fetishes. No, my fetish was gonna be Titanic Billy Zane. Oh. We'll get there. You oh yeah, no, we will. Um, yeah, because we're still talking about like. 80s Billy Zane. He was also in Critters. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. adorable oh, he... in Critters. Yes. You thought it was adorable. Oh, like looks wise. I was like, his yeah. characters. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know. Um, I like when he has hair though. Like, I think he looks good. You're like, right. Yeah. Like, I agree. I mean, he rock he rocks a bald head very well. Don't get me wrong, but I do appreciate him. Oh, smolder. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the part where he's like talking to what's her face the in the window. The prostitute lady. Yeah. Um, and he's like seducing her with his hand like from down on the ground while she's in the window. His wind hand. Yeah. And it wipes He's away. so he fucking goddamn away. sexy. Um, dead cool. calm. Oh yeah, dead calm. I was definitely wanting to talk about that. Let's talk about dead calm. Yeah. Have you seen dead calm, Morgan? No. Oh my fucking God. It's so good. We're going to talk about 90s thrillers in this episode. So I'm sure it'll get brought up again later on. But Dead Calm was one of those movies that was always on TV. Yeah. Uh, Nicole Kidman. Sam Neill. Sam Neill. Who was like on my If really? I Could Meet oh, Would Meet list. Oh, Sam Neill yeah. is great. Oh, Sam Neill. That's adorable. Yes. You see um, his dick in Possession. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Thank you for telling me, because now I won't watch it. It's going to shatter my it. no. Yeah. You should watch that movie, though. I don't want to see his peen. Uh, that movie is amazing, though. You should watch it. Okay. Um, but Dead Calm is a fantastic fucking 90s thriller. I was going to say, like, when we were discussing, uh, talking about 90s thrillers, because we've talked about 90s horror before, and... It dawned on me that we had never really mentioned uh, thrillers before. Uh, Dead Calm is pretty high on my list. Um, it just always, it was always on TV, and it's so good. Like it's so creepy and it's very intense. Mm. Like Sam and uh, <coughs> Nicole Kidman are a couple. They're like on a boat, and Billy Zane uh, comes onto the boat and basically kind of like holds them hostage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's like creepy as fuck in that movie. It's really good. You should and watch it's it. like. 
on the water, which I think always adds to the yeah, like right. thrill. The Does thrill one of them get thrown it. overboard? Pardon me. We're mm-hmm. not gonna spoil it for you. Is it like Natalie Wood? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, like two that guys. Oh, and then the story. Yeah, yeah. 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 like yeah. Christopher Walken's like, I don't know what I think, happened, but, it's, but you made a good know, point. You know that he, Robert Wagner, did that shit. Oh fuck yeah. No, he. I never fully believed that. I cannot. He did it. He fucking did it. Swear Chris to God. Let's ask Walken. Christopher Walken if Christopher we ever Walken. meet him. Christopher I wonder if he still gets asked that. Mm. By I reporters don't think here I would, and there. but yeah, no, maybe. No, reporters here yeah. and there. I, I know, read, like, perhaps. a lot of true crime stuff, and apparently, like, recently, they pulled him back in for questioning. Well, oh, come yeah. on, the technology now, man. I yeah. mean, you can't just come home from a boating trip and say no, and then they're like, like okay. I don't, somebody went overboard and died, and I don't know what happened. Come on. Mm. That's not, that's not true. Uh, but Megan, uh, you said sure. because they're like in the ocean, that adds to the thrill of the movie. Um, I have a fear of open water, so mm-hmm. that's why that movie kind of stuck with me as a kid. Mm. <gasps> and Billy Zane was on Titanic. Continue. Oh, I know. Boat. <laughs> he's got a boat thing. Yeah, he's got a boat thing. Um, but uh, he's also in Tombstone. Yes, he is. He's the the actor. Acting. I am an actor. Another fabulous movie. Yeah, I guess I'll have to watch. You should Tombstone. throw Billy Zane in that sandwich that I want to have for the Tombstone yeah. sandwich with fucking Bill Paxton. Yeah, you <laughs> had some lettuce. And you had some lettuce on I'm, that sandwich. I know. I'm girl. pretty sure that we talked about. The, we said the same thing in the last episode. Do you I'm think sorry. Billy Zane would be the lettuce or the cheese? Mm. I think Billy Zane would be the cheese. The greasy, stinky cheese. He's too good so? to be lettuce. Oh no, Val Kilmer's definitely the crunch. greasy, stinky cheese in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's dying. He's dying. Yeah. Oh, I have consumption. The can have consumption. Oh, shit. You know, I just, before we, I just, <laughs> pretty high. <laughs> so, <laughs> before we leave dead calm, I just found this fact humorous. I found my word. The budget was $10.4 million. Box office, it made 10.2. Dead calm was a box. What? It's on a whole bunch of lists of, like, best movies to watch. It got 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, really? it was, like, this huge movie. Yeah, so it's but actually it just, a great movie. Now, I didn't check what circumstances. I didn't check who it was released, like, at the same time. I don't yeah. know what came out in the theater that day as well. I don't know what its competition Titanic was. Titanic, probably. <laughs> right? <laughs> that boat ran over the land. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, apparently it was, like, financially a flop, but it didn't really matter because it got, like, such high, like, accolades that... Yeah. But yeah, I just thought that was I'm like, going to have to watch it. I'm oh, going to have to Oh, you should watch Dead Calm. It's fucking genuinely a creepy movie. I'll have to 100. Have to like I feel like you know those movies like Talented Mr. Ripley, you yeah. know, like yeah. a charming man who ends up being a psycho. Like all those movies it's they just make me they make me think of Dead Calm like immediately. Mm. Um great cast, very suspenseful. Highly recommend. Um so I just watched The Phantom for the first time ever last night. Did you night. love it? Can you see the outline of his dick in his outfit? Hello? You can see every definition of his body in that fucking movie. He got extra jacked for that movie because he was already jacked, but he, then he worked out for a year before they even wow. filmed The Phantom. Good for him. I'd never seen it before. And, and were you pleasantly surprised I, I, uh, with his body and the work that he did? Yeah, with him, I was pleased. With the movie, uh, I'll have to say that I feel like uh, it's one of those movies that people love because they watched it when they were younger. Yeah. Um, and I don't have that with like The Princess Bride, which is why yeah. I'm kind of meh For with shame. Princess Bride. I know. Yeah. But so I feel like I enjoyed it, but I'm probably not going to watch it again. Yeah. But right, you love it though, right? Love it. And you no, watch it I when you were younger. I, oh, all the time. I watch yeah, it with my brother I all the time. I never saw it. However, yeah. it's still one of those movies where, like, I can watch it once every three years. Like, I don't, it's not something where I'm like, oh, I love this movie. You I have to watch it all the time. Yeah, yeah like I watched Monster it a Squad. lot. When I, but it was yeah. same. It's not like Monster Squad yeah. I watch it all the time. You know what it's yeah. like for me? Biodome. I grew oh, up on Biodome, mm-hmm. but if I put that shit on, I'm just like, okay, that's enough Biodome. Yeah. That's how I am with Illegal, the illegal. <laughs> Save the money, money. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Illegal, <laughs> illegal. Um, but Morgan has never seen The Phantom. I've never seen The Phantom. Uh, no, I have not. Well, I have it now, so you can borrow it. Okay. Um, it's worth it just to see him in those fucking sexy What format purple. did you buy it on? Uh... I ripped it. <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah, so I just cut that part out. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. No, I just downloaded it. I was going to say, I want to see the cover. Uh, yeah, I know. But 
Billy Zane posts about the Phantom quite often oh, on his Instagram. Yeah. He never posts about Demon Knight, but he posts. Why about... not? This I movie made know. lots of money. This movie was popular. This, this movie, movie was fucking was kicks ass. A profit. Yep. Yeah, but no, he posts about the Phantom a lot. Um, there Probably is one he's part. So proud of his abs in it. Or Yo, something. dude. <sighs> There's one remember part, me though. as I was. Yeah, I know. <laughs> remember me as the Phantom. Uh, but there's one part because he's got like the black mask that goes over his eyes, and he's wearing like black yeah. makeup like around his eyelids. And at the very end of the movie, when he does tells, he turn around and go ah, 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 like a jailer. Me and my brother still do that all the time. Um, no, there's a part at the very end of the movie when uh, Buffy fucking, like, is like, I know who you are, and take your mask off, and he takes his mask off, and then they, like, cut to, like, another scene where he doesn't have the makeup around oh, his eyelids, really? and it's like, what happened to your makeup? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I said that out loud. Ew. I hate that continuity bullshit. I know. Because yeah. he yeah. would look like such a dork with just two black circles around his eyes. I was going to say, he'd look pretty good. <laughs> so god. I know. I feel like they'd be perfect circles, though, like a yeah. clown. Do, 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 do. I, I would definitely picture them as being messy because you'd oh. probably get like sweaty under the yeah, mask. Yeah, that's probably true. And it would be like kind of have like a crow, like the crow kind of Do they effect. do, they do yeah, that in Batman funny. movies? Because Batman always had like, you know, like the rubber mask and yeah. then like the black all the way to his eyes. But like when he like, oh, who are you, Batman? And they pull his mask off. Does he have black In Batman eyes? Returns, I believe, yes. Okay, well then, cool. They thought about that, that that would be all right. Why didn't they just like, Billy Zane with the Yeah, like it's pretty funny. He just naked. takes his mask off and all of a sudden, his eyelids are like flesh colored <laughs> like what <laughs> see i feel like this is this is one of those things of the fucking 90s though yeah yeah like it was like too perfect it's, yeah the 90s yeah they tried yeah. too hard mm. everything was too much man yeah. over the top Out that's a great movie <laughs> yeah, over the top. <laughs> oh yeah um titanic oh here we go we can go there eastberg eastberg I feel like ta- Titanic is the only, uh, I said this the other day, the only reason why you should watch Titanic is for Billy Zane. No, I said Holy for Bill so Paxton. Knows. But then she said for Bill Paxton. Wait, she's like, like, but he's, he's in it for five seconds. seconds. He's in it for like five seconds at the beginning. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. And <laughs> the end though, so you gotta watch the whole fucking thing for him to come back in the end. So Yeah, I know. That's for true. what, Tori? And the end. He comes back in the end at the end of yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah. But like, oh, God damn it. He's such a You babe. guys are both wrong <laughs> oh my god we're not just skipping past the fact that you guys just said that hold now hold on the movie has leonardo dicaprio in it the man is a fucking genius behind the fucking camera in front of the camera wherever yeah. he stands around the camera he's really right. good to the side yeah. to the left yeah. to the right he's... to the left to the left Huzza, fuzza, 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 to the left <laughs> <laughs> i feel like he's just hasn't done too much bad in Hollywood. No, yeah, I agree. agree. Yeah. And but so I watch it for him because him, when he comes out in that suit, it was such a like heartthrob moment for like my generation. Oh yeah. Like when he, when he gets all Because that was him in his up. like Romeo and Juliet like face. Absolutely. And he had his little mushroom cut, right? He was like so, a like, little younger so he's like a little thin. That's right. Like and Still rebellious yeah. in every world yeah, just a totally. little bit rebellious yep. you know and he that was like this hair. dirty like like poor in like the poor part of the ship dancing around like yeah. teaching her how to live character fuck off i guess like and don't get me wrong like i do like some Kate romantic boobs? movies fuck off. Yes. Uh, oh yeah i know yeah you know but I, I don't like movie. the romantic it's a good movie. scenes in that movie no, as no, no, soon no, no. as they hit the iceberg oh, it is like gnarly. that's when fuck. i truly admire the movie and every scene with billy zane oh and Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates. Yeah. Kathy Bates. Yeah. Like, she is also, yeah, like, she's a... Yeah, she's a queen in that movie, for sure, because she's backing her up when her mom's being a cunt. And that guy's in it. Oh, Maggie Smith is the mom. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a star-studded fucking yeah. affair, is, yeah. pretty sure. It, yeah, for sure. Like, I'm not saying, uh... It's not a, like a terrible movie or anything. Like it's obviously when the a big movie. budget like, Hollywood. But everything you know like I mean? leading yeah. up Isn't to isn't that our boy Avatar who did Titanic? James Cameron. James yeah. Cameron. Yeah. yeah. The acting that Billy Zane portrays oh, as yeah. that like abusive fiance, like he's pompous, so fucking, pompous, like, like rich. He nails it though. Like he's so good. And like the part when he fucking slaps her. 
Yeah. It's just like, it's actually, it's so convincing. It's like so and shocking. it's so funny when you see him in, um, like he's incredible in Demon Knight. I love the theatrical aspect that he gave to the character as the, the collector in uh, Demon Knight. But when I was watching like the Phantom, I was like, oh my God, like Billy Zane, you're so much better than this. Yeah. I was like, because I just always think of Titanic and he's so good. Like it's like Ben Affleck was always good at, at playing a dick. Yeah. Like he was so good in Mall Rats. Like he was so fucking good yeah. at being an asshole and like I feel like that's difficult to do as an actor like you could be like bubbly you could be happy yeah um maybe but it's being Ben Affleck's piece not of acting. shit oh. I think that <laughs> and I think that Billy Zane oh, I think that he has that like arrogance in his voice no matter what he does yeah and I agree he, it's just the way that his voice was. He has that like created. confidence. Confidence. That it's because his eyebrows are fucking pointy. And That's what it is. He's got smooth, bitch like, eyebrows. Words roll off his mm-hmm. fucking tongue. Oh my lord! Yeah, him playing the asshole, and he like he. What I meant by his tone of voice too is he's like he plays that rich guy. He has that mm. cadence to yeah. his voice. Mm-hmm. That like I'm fucking holier than thou. Oh my sweet Jesus! In that little like jacket with the scarf and the top hat. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Definitely like for me. Yeah. That like the, that doesn't. For me, and at the <clears throat> end when he's like when he's a fucking dick to get onto a boat, like it yeah. really shows like he's that twisted the whole time. You're like, is he that evil? And then you see him like yeah. skipping in line or moving a kid or something. He does something pure evil, yeah, to like get on a boat. And you're like, yeah, I know, Fuck. yeah, yeah. Woo! No, he's he's great in Titanic. Um, I love Billy Zane in Twin Peaks. I know you guys are not huge twin. Like, no. did you even get to the? Uh, I don't remember the second season. No. So no, he's in no. uh, Twin Peaks. He comes. He shows up in the second season. He's so. It's like he's his character in Twin Peaks is the complete opposite as his character from Titanic. Well, like he's, he's like, like this so soft and genuine. Nice. He's a gentleman. Like he shows up and he's just like this charming, like fucking gentleman. And D Flowers, Audrey Horn, and that was like <laughs> for him. Flowers. Yeah, he does. Like he takes her virgin, her virginity, his and I read talk. an interview. <laughs> what <are you> <laughs> <laughs> he, he mocked her. <laughs> he mocked her he cherry. He <laughs> um, He flowered her. Yeah. And he talks about that in an interview. Um, he was just really excited that he got to have that character that was like, because Audrey Horn is like a huge deal in the show and she's like the sexy one and but she was a virgin like the whole time and every man like wanted to fuck her but she just played games and and then when she finally has sex with Billy Zane like he was like oh it was it was such an honor to play the guy the who got, that to got to bang her pop fucking Audrey Horn's cherry yeah. and now I popped both your yeah. cherries <laughs> and then Julian Sands got a hold of her and cut all her arms oh, and god. legs off <laughs> god damn that movie sucks boxing Helena oh, what a terrible I don't think I can talking ever watch about that movie again. fucking mesh shirts. I know Bill Paxton oh in a mesh God. shirt, so bad. And vinyl the pants, 90s. I believe. Yes, vinyl pants. He was also in Zoolander. Do you remember when he was in Zoolander? He played. played he's played himself yeah, in a yeah. lot of movies. Actually, like yeah. I was looking through his IMDb and it was like Billy Zane as himself more than once, a couple of times. Like, and why is that? <laughs> because he's so awesome that people are like, we people need are like, just we need Billy, Billy Zane, Zane in the movie. And I love, himself. and they always say Billy Zane. Oh, it's Billy Zane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, of course. Hey, Billy oh, yes. Zane. I didn't get to see it because I didn't get to see it. But did you guys get, <laughs> did you guys get to see the KFC commercial? No. Where he's like in gold. Yes. Like his face is gold and yes. he plays the Colonel, he plays Colonel Sanders. Yeah. What? Like golden, no. A golden Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Wow. So like I was really excited to see that, but I couldn't uh, figure I out the damn photo. I saw photos of it. Yeah. I didn't actually watch I want to see video. if he like speaks, if he's like this like ridiculous character and then he's got like his fucking smooth as fuck voice that comes right? out telling me to buy a chicken sandwich. Yes, and Billy Zane, like, yes. I will buy a chicken sandwich. <laughs> but he's gold? Covered yeah. in gold. Like gold dust, the wrestler? Yes. Yeah. Exactly like gold dust. Exactly. It oh was my. for like a thing. It was a oh my. Oh my. I'm gonna look I'm gonna look it up. It was for a Yeah, I didn't see a picture of this. Um he's also it. in a Tales from the Crypt episode. Yeah. Uh well cooked he hands. In, yeah. He plays a magician who murders another magician for his Is box he, of He's actually in a Tales trick. from the Crypt yeah. episode? Yeah, really? he has a mustache. I love that there's so much more of that yeah. to come. He's also in the Marilyn Manson dope show video. Yeah. What the fuck am I looking at? This is like <laughs> recent, right? 2017. Because yeah. this is like a 
new picture. Yeah. 2017, my girl. I don't know. I don't like that. No. I like that hair. hair. I, like hair. Yeah. <laughs> I love how he's holding like a tray of chicken. Oh my fucking god. That is Billy fucking Zane weird. is the next Colonel Sanders. Yeah, that's okay, it. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. Um, he was also uh, supposed to be in Dirty Dancing. Yeah. But he couldn't dance. As really? Patrick's, and then Patrick Swayze got the role. Um. Yeah, because he's a fucking ballerina. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So that's interesting, though. I don't think I could picture it. But yeah, I guess he could if he couldn't dance, and there's no point in being in a movie about dancing. Yeah. And I'm glad, because I think that was, like, pivotal for Patrick Swayze's oh career. I mean, yes. it wasn't. He was already so successful, but that movie was, like, fucking yeah. everything. But then he just was able to shine, like, his fucking... His, Bald head. His talents. <laughs> and, like, his so pec like... muscles. Patrick Are you Swayze! Sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm still thinking about Billy Zane. I'm imagining Billy Zane in Dirty Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit yeah oh. that's yeah no no i can't it's yeah. just not great so i discovered that he he shaved his head for swimming purposes in 1997 which i find very hot because that means he's an athlete hydrodynamics Ooh. yeah so that probably means he waxed his body if he's gonna shave his head if he's that committed to shave his hair off he probably shaved his arms and legs and feet yeah all of it do you wax? Do you sugar? I mean, at that point, it's the 90s, late 90s. I wonder if he straight up did full body wax or shave. Because sugaring, I don't think, was a thing. I don't know. I just remember Nair being Nair! Big in the 90s. You know what? Oh, Nair. Nair. oh my god, that stand! That stand! That shit fucking freaked, man. Oh, girl. Nair. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Jada Pinkett. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she's a fucking queen. Holy shit. Most of my notes are on her. She's an actress, singer, author, and businesswoman. Um, so her and Will Smith have their own production company. Uh, she has her own music company, her own fashion label. She wrote a children's book. She created her own TV show. And her and Will have their own charity that focuses on youth in urban inner cities and family support. They have provided grants for nonprofit organizations, and she has made personal donations to organizations, one of them being to a dog yeah. organization. Um, yeah, she is a very busy lady. Yeah, um, what the fuck? She rules. Uh, she was really good friends with Tupac. Yeah, well, and it's debatable whether or not they had a relationship, because I, I've, I've read some of the letters that they've sent to each other, and like... She like she always is very like emotional, I guess, in interviews when she talks about Tupac. Like he fucking wrote po the, there's a book of poems that he wrote. Oh and, and like there's poems about her Aww. in it. I have one saved in my phone. I can fucking read it if you want. They apparently were were really, really close. It seemed like they probably at one time actually were dating and like perfect for each other, but then things just kinda just didn't work out hmm. the way that they should have, which is really sad. But she, he loved her a lot, and she loved aw, him a lot as well. It's that's really precious. Well, Menace to Society is a great movie. I, I have seen that movie a few times. Um, it's very serious and sad. And uh, she auditioned for the role of Lisa in Fresh Prince, and that's how she met Will. Um, but she was told that she didn't get the role because she was too short. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, Will's pretty tall, right? Yeah, but still, like, it's like, fuck off. Like, I feel like... Put some height, shoes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah shoes like, on. they said the yeah. same thing to Sarah Michelle Gellar before she got the role of Buffy, but they liked her so much because she actually auditioned for the role of Cordelia, the girl who, Cassandra, whatever her last name is, um... Uh, Audition for the role of Buffy, but then they liked Sarah Michelle Geller a lot, but they she almost didn't get it because she's like five four. But they found a trick that if she wore knee high boots with short skirts, she did that a that lot. Made, yeah, it and made it, her look it taller. does make you look a little bit taller. But I don't know. I feel like that's so unfair and just another fucking like Hollywood bullshit rule where like your height shouldn't <clears throat> determine your career. Like if you are a really good actor, who fucking cares how fucking tall you are? I yeah. feel like unless the role was specifically written for a certain body type. Oh, of course. Like a tall person. Yeah. yeah. Like but Zena, like warrior a... princess. She yeah, should probably yeah. be tall. How tall do you figure Lucy Lawless is? I think she's pretty tall. Yeah, I eh? think she's six yeah. feet. 
Jeepers Creepers. Right? Yeah, she's another one. I really like her a lot. Oh, dude. She's so awesome. So, I wonder, like, did Will Smith watch her audition? Like, or they probably just met? Because you figure when you're auditioning for a show, you don't meet the star if you don't get it. Right. I wonder, I wonder how they met. I'm just curious. But didn't she end up on the show, but just not... One of his part, like, one of his as, quick girlfriends? Yeah, like, not as... The main one of the main characters. I could have <laughs> swore that she was on the show, just I, like as like a one episode. I don't character. know. I definitely remember her from um, a different world. That was the show. Like I used to watch that show a lot uh, for the dumbest reason ever, only because uh, one of the actresses' names was Jasmine, and I was like, "That's like, almost like so my name. A famous person name. has almost the same name as me." But I used to watch a different world a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> She, as you said earlier, Morgan, had her breakthrough role in uh, The Nutty Professor. And uh, she was very briefly in Scream 2. At the very beginning, she gets uh, killed at the theater. Movie theater. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually didn't even know this because I've only seen The Matrix 2 yeah, once. Yeah, she was in all the oh, other movies. She was in yeah. Yeah, yeah, the that's sequels. Right. Yeah, that's right. I had actually no idea. Um, but yeah, so she, uh, has her own show now. Um, it's on Facebook. It's like kind of like a YouTube like channel, but it's like a Facebook channel. It's called Red Table Talk. I've actually seen clips of it and it's actually pretty cool. And, uh, I think there's a couple seasons, but she, it's kind of like, um, the view. It's kind of like that, but it's way more authentic and real and like no barriers whatsoever. Like she will, she had Will Smith's ex- on the show and like they straight up like face to face like talk to each other about what it was like when because will smith has a kid with yeah. this other woman and uh and they were like talking about how awkward it was when he left her and started dating jada yeah and it's actually that's fucking, it's like, a great show that's pretty actually brave. like she is courageous she doesn't give a shit she'll say what she wants to say um i haven't seen this episode but i really want to watch the episode with leah remini because uh, a lot of people think that Jada Pinkett is a Scientologist, but she isn't. And the reason why people think that she is is because back in 2004, she met Tom Cruise because they were in Collateral together. Yeah. And uh, she donated $20,000 to Scientology's program for homeschooling because her kids are homeschooled. Um, but she has never been involved with the church. So she made a donation and people just took it out of context. Yes. They, like, and I guess they to her, the episode with Leah Remini, they talk about that. I love that woman. I still have yeah. to watch yeah. that documentary. I know. I still haven't seen it yet. I either, saw the and... first because she has a few seasons now. Like yeah, she's done like, a few parts of it. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I saw like the one complete part season or whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. and it was like, it was really really good because the parts where a normal interviewer or what have you would be like, oh, we're being chased away. Okay, whatever. She is like filming and recording during some of this. She's, and like, she's like, are you guys down. seeing this? And she's like, I'm fucking. And she's like sassy as her. fuck, right? So she's like, keep the cameras on. Like, this shit is being aired. And it's just like, it. you are so satisfied as a viewer in every episode because she pushes it that step further than you think any show is going to go, like, investigative awesome. or, like, good. It's, kind of she's shit. not oh, afraid. Yeah. I like it's that. absurd no. that that organization are still valid and running. Yeah. It's bullshit. But you know what, though? Starting, shit's starting to happen yeah. now since uh, Keith Raniere. That, um... There is another investigation like going on in Scientology right now because Keith, Keith Raniere was found guilty. And, oh, that uh, guy who just got busted. The, the next, the next guy. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and there's another investigation. There's a woman that's like talking to the FBI right now. But yeah, uh, so Jada Pinkett is a queen. Uh, she's a badass. And um, um, can we talk about wicked wisdom for a second here? So pissed. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about. Okay, you know what? I was like, when Wicked Wisdom first Man, came we used out, to make like fun of them, and I feel really bad about. I that. was gonna say, yeah, like they're terrible. Yeah. Um, but good for her. But good for her. Fronting like, she doesn't a fucking give a shit. metal band. She I know. Fucking scream. I'm I looking know. this up. So. In a metal band. Yeah. If you like ever and like they did the Ozfest a couple years after we did. I remember they were touring like at at the time when we were also sort of, like, out and, like, kind of big or whatever, and I remember thinking, like, oh, this is kind of funny because she's an actress, and we we were all like, oh, ha, 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 like, she's trying to be something that she's not, but now that I, like, think back, I'm like, you know what, good for her. She actually likes metal. Yeah, like, she likes, she's into it. I don't know, for me back then, like, I guess, you know, I mean, maybe it would have been different if I had met her or seen the show, because I never did, we never encountered 
uh, Wicked Wisdom at all that I can remember anyways. But yeah, like it was just, it did seem weird that it was like, okay, well, you know, you're getting a lot of attention obviously because you're an actress and you know, you have like, you know, well a famous known. husband and blah, blah, blah. Like you're a power couple, all that stuff. I don't know. She's fucking was screaming like in a metal band. Yeah. Have you heard this band, Megan? No, but I'm looking them up and I can imagine them not being something that I would enjoy. Oh no. Like the, I don't like the music at but all. But no, I'm just saying like, just based on what I'm seeing, I'm like, oh, but there's a video recorded in 2013. Oh, really? Actually, they have, I saw yeah. that. They do some shows like recently. Uh, they have. It looks like a music video. I think there's really? uh, on the Wikipedia still doing it? because they only have two albums, but they are rebranded as something new now. They changed their name. Really? They're called something else. Wicked now. Evolution. Oh, yes, really? Wicked that's Evolution. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, I remember when that first video came out, though. Like, hey, the first performance ever was the Saturday Night Live performance, yeah. and she looked like Bone Thugs and Harmony yeah, with like yeah. that big hair and like the baggy like shirt and everything. And I remember Morgan and I like watching it because like I was also a singer in a metal band and a female fronted metal band. And then uh, I, when that performance came on, like we were like, "Holy shit! Like this is like not good, like at all." Um, <laughs> but because um, like I'm I'm referring to like the music um, in itself. Like I'm not a fan of the music at all. But when I was reading about the, her and the band as I was doing my research for this episode, they did uh, the first five days of a Britney Spears tour. Isn't and that weird? Yeah, I remember very, that. very weird. And, uh, but then after that, um, she met Sharon Osbourne. Mm -hmm. And then Sharon Osbourne was like, you're in a band, let's fucking put you on Ozfest. And um, they were like, okay. And then when they announced it, people lost their shit. Like, no? No, yeah, exactly. Oh. Like, negative like comments and receptions. Like, people were like, this is bullshit. This, they're not metal. But they are kind of... Like, I mean, yeah, like, they, I would classify them as metal. Like, I guess, like, rap metal, like, a little bit. Yeah, like, uh, early 90s. But, yeah, um, right. Yeah, so then, like, people were like, no, 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 like, metalheads were like, fuck this shit, like, yes. it's only because she's, like, a, a famous actress, like, blah, 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 but then, um, so they didn't give a shit. Her and her band members, they're friends with Biohazard, I'm pretty sure yeah. the band members are, mm -hmm. like, because those dudes look familiar, and, um... They were like, uh, we don't give a shit. We're just going to do our thing. And then for the first, like, three or five days of Ozfest, like, they played the second stage. Like, they had people booing them. Oh, they, but they still, But I admire the fact that they they didn't care. They pushed through it. They kept on going with the show. And that's, to me, my personal opinion, like, what, like, the true meaning of being as, like, a, a woman in a metal band. If you don't care that there's gonna there's always gonna be like those men that were just like uh whatever like you're just like a girl and trying to get attention like blah 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 like but you can't scream like chuck sheldon or blah 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 so fuck this shit but if you keep doing what you love and don't give a shit what the naysayers say um that means that you're true to the music and they that's what they did and then after a week of being on Ozfest, people started like like word of mouth started spreading and people were like actually you should go to the show and watch them and see them like fucking put on a good show and rage yeah. and you can see that attitude in metal and that's why like you can tell the difference between like seeing a band like them and like, a band that's like clearly it's just like this girl is just you know here because she's like a pretty face and yeah. not a good singer and like doesn't give a shit about metal. Jada Pinkett didn't give a shit and she kept on pushing through. And by the second week of Ozfest, people were like applauding them, like cheering them. People were like into it at that point. Like they were like because they saw it. Like and metalheads and metal fans like they recognize shit like that. And uh, Will Smith came up on stage and sang a song with her for Aww. one show. Oh, for I remember. Uh, I wasn't Aww. there, but it was I remember like watching the video and I was like that is adorable that they like were like fucking Aww. like all like angry like screaming Aww. like metal Aww. on stage at Ozfest so and I was cool like that. fuck. Yes, you know what? I don't like the music, but you know what though? Good for Wicked That's Wisdom. Awesome. That's sweet. Well, no, yeah, like I mean now. like I've had lots of people boo me before. Yeah. You know, like, I've had, we've had shows where people booed us, depending on the crowd or whatever, and yeah. it's like... Like, girls think that they could be yeah. metal. Yeah, oh, like, you fucking do it up there. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, and I, honestly, like, when I was reading about the band, like, Wicked Wisdom, like, I, I felt like I related to her. Already, it's a boys club, and they're like, you don't belong. Yeah. You know? 
So, but it's like, but you just have to be like, I don't give a shit yeah, what you fucking you just have think. To not listen. And that is and funny because going. back then, like, we used to make fun of that song because in the song, like, she's like, "Cause I'm pissed." Yeah. Because she is fucking pissed, and like, so are we. So like, I feel like I relate to her in that way. So I was like, "Go you." <laughs> Yeah, Jada, give us a call. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. Dick Miller. Dick Mill. Dick. DM. DM. You can hop into that my guy. DMs. <laughs> Whatever. Dick you can Miller. Hop gonna hop into, into my DM. Dick Miller. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, Dick Miller. I still want to watch that documentary. Um, there's a documentary about him called uh, That Guy, Dick Miller, because he's, like, in everything. Yeah, and like, he has had an incredible career. I mean, he passed away in January, right? Yes. Yeah. Which is really, really sad. But, like, what an incredible career. Like, I went on his IMDb, and I counted at least, I stopped counting after 25, at least 25 Roger Corman movies. Yeah, him and Roger were um, worked a lot together. Especially, like, in the 50s and 60s, like, early, yeah. early stuff, which I think is incredible. And he's also been in, I think, every single Joe Dante movie. Wow. Ever made. He put him in every single movie. Like, That's awesome. Like, he's been in every one. It's fucking crazy shit. You love that he made his living off, I'm not going to say bit parts entirely, but kind of bit parts. Not entirely, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. this man, like Clint made, Howard. Like this yeah. man has yeah. made some. Yeah, like he's he's been like everyone knows your face kind of guy. Yeah. But have you mm. starred in like a you know a lead role of Air Force One? No, no. but I bet that's like, what that that documentary talks about. Yeah, like yeah. He, he's just, he's the guy that has the little choice moments in movies that you're like, I know that guy, and he has like. The perfect you know, line, the yeah, perfect exactly. something. Like yeah, exactly. Like Terminator when he's the fucking gun salesman yeah, guy. It's yeah. like everybody knows that. Like, you know, he's got a couple lines in it, and it's like, hey, I know that guy. Right. Yeah, but he, I don't think, I don't know that he'd ha- ever starred in a movie. Do you know of any movie that Dick Miller was like the star? I can't think of one, no. And I can't really picture him, not that he couldn't pull it off, but I can't really picture that hypothetical DM lead. <laughs> the DM lead? Because he's not really he's not like. like leading man material but like he's he's had like a, quite a career like he's in gremlins and piranha and the howling he's in the original little shop of horrors chopping mall and creeps terminator the burbs i, watched I the love burbs recently. the burbs the burbs so the burbs. much the burbs. i can't okay so just pause we're at the part where he wraps her in a shower curtain J- jada pinkett and he drags her down the stairs yeah that looks like it would hurt i cannot you know what? Boom, when boom, I watched boom, this boom. the other day, I was like, "That's definitely a dummy." It has to be. There's cement. Or it could be, be a stunt. It could be a stunt person. Oh but cement God. stairs, your head yeah. Smashed, even your spine. Stunt However, Ooh. no, they wouldn't be styrofoam because he walked down them. It had his body weight. I was gonna say maybe they're like, oh, okay, her body is fantastic. Yeah, right. She's, she's, she's cut. Holy Actually, I, I, when shit. I saw photos of her, like live photos of Wicked Wisdom, she's just wearing like a sports bra with shorts, and yeah. like she's got like fucking six pack like but she's, she's never... built very like she's skin, very petite. skin to yeah. muscle like yeah. super thin very yeah. very petite but yeah like it's quite obvious that like she fucking works out and like she still looks good i creeped on her yeah. fucking yeah. instagram recently when we were doing some research for this um but she still looks fucking fantastic mm-hmm. i was uh, jealous of a woman who can pull off like a shaved head oh i know I remember when you it. shaved your head yes i do Oh, we're, we've talked about this too. Oh my lord! I actually kind of almost had the same the same hair, like the short blonde. Yeah, the little bleach. Yeah, yeah. short blonde. Almost like flea, but like not. Yeah, <laughs> but hopefully better looking. But I don't know. Hopefully maybe. better looking. I don't know. Hopefully. You know what? Something kind of a couple uh, very interesting things about Dick Miller. He has a PhD in psychology. And Are you fucking kidding yeah, me? Dick yeah, Miller yeah. is a motherfucking doctor. Yeah, he Doctor a- Dick. <laughs> And he was actually working like as a doctor in a hospital um, and writing scripts at the same time. And then he started working, uh, like doing like Broadway mm-hmm. and kind of shifted gears. He has a PhD in psychology. He has that face though, doesn't he? So... Yeah. I could see him in uh, yeah. a tweed suit. 
A corduroy yeah. suit. Yeah, because Aww. that's like so very 70s. Yeah. A corduroy suit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was also, for some reason, it just kept happening. And I think the directors obviously did it on purpose. But he has played a character named Walter Paisley six times in six Aww. different movies like so the second time i'm assuming there was probably like a roger corman thing and then it just kept happening on purpose like they were like let's just like call his character because he was like the garbage man and the burbs let's just call him walter paisley that's because he's like, been walter paisley before that's so weird <laughs> yeah but like kind of a, like neat because it's like obviously a run like a running joke in hollywood like oh like dick miller has been walter paisley so yeah. many times let's just keep going yeah also, let me just say, like, that building bombed the fuck up. Nobody is walking out of there. I know, right? I don't know how the fuck anybody did walk oh, out of there. Oh, the 90s. Yeah. Right? Oh, no, no, she was protected. Oh, she was. But I'm pretty sure that circle of light. the flames would still be going. Let's... For like twenty four hours at least. But this That's is right, like, fire. the big explosion. Yeah. <laughs> 90s <laughs> shit. Explode. But yeah, I guess, like, there's some godly shit going on. So yeah, of course she's spared. I love I love the end of this movie. She's wearing that oversized jean jacket and she shoves the thing in the in the top pocket before she gets on the uh, I bet you had an oversized and... jean jacket in the nineties. Honey, didn't we all have a fucking oversized <laughs> Fuck sleeves yeah. rolled up like baggy oh, yeah, sleeves rolled yeah. up? Oh mm-hmm. my goodness. Plaid shirt tied around the waist. I wore mine with a mini white with yellow sunflower skirts. Oh, I like that. That's I can good. That. That's I a good. That's a good look. That's very nineties. It was like a little bit of the blossom sunflowers? up in there. Do you know what I'm saying? Sunflowers. Yeah, the were sunflowers were a fucking oh, thing in the nineties. And sun, sun and moons. Sun and moons with the faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes that makes me think of the Doug Jones McDonald's commercial. Oh, amazing! <laughs> like the half moon face. What Big Mac tonight? Yeah, that's fucking Doug Jones. This should have been like this is Billy D. Williams. This is a oh cameo. my god, that would have been amazing. This is a moment for a cameo. Faux show. I know like, why. Why was it? If wasn't it was it? Billy Billy D. Will- Williams, like you should have imagine forty five, right? <laughs> Billy D. Williams like coming out of like like the like hat tips down, yeah. and up, and then it's like it should have been somebody. Yeah, why for didn't sure. they just? Because that guy doesn't look spooky. Yeah, I don't know. Who I know that he's guy supposed is. to be. Sp- I'm picturing something funny. Like I'm picturing whatever I don't, whatever year this was made. Ninety five, I believe we said. Yeah. Was Richard Pryor still alive? Oh though? my like, god! Oh, yeah. I would, for me, that'd be like, but a bump. Hey, incredible! <laughs> I fucking love Richard Pryor, man. Like I used to watch his stand up when I was a kid, and I don't know if you guys <clears throat> ever watched his stand up, but you've ever seen him like making fun of people on acid. No. It no. is hilarious. Him and Gene Wilder together are just like pure comic geniuses um but so we're at the end of the movie but we're not finished the episode yet but i just wanted to mention a quick little thing about john kassir um who does the voice of the crypt keeper he used to be married to julie benz and i knew that but i forgot and i know her from buffy um but she's also in dexter she's like the girlfriend that blonde girlfriend that dexter has eventually oh really yeah see i know her from buffy Buffy? uh she is um the girl the vampire who made spike darla darla yeah so john kassir used to be married to darla but she like okay like in dexter oh yeah she's a kind like long ago she like still looks really good yeah oh yeah i saw her in i saw her at fan expo one year and i was like just i'm a huge buffy fan so that's why i went to q a but yeah uh they used to be married oh, yeah married. so okay. he probably um, used that crib keeper voice in bed and she was oh like, my no god way. so i did I a little bit of research out. on uh, mm-hmm. john kassir mm-hmm. and uh he uh beat sinbad for best stand-up on star search yeah it's like american idol kind do you of remember story, right? america's got talent or when something. sinbad did watching. star search well john kassir fucking beat sinbad um, oh my god. It's because Seabad's not very good. Seabad is not very good. <laughs> um, uh, he also uh, beat Michael Winslow for the job of the Crypt Keeper voice. Michael really? Winslow is the police academy yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow, I love that guy. Yeah. The they should have got that fucking movie. guy to be the cameo at the end of the oh, movie. That would have been, been great. Yeah. Really. And um, he uh, was in the Bad. first commercial for The Legend of Zelda for Nintendo, and I watched it, and he's like crazy in it, and he's just talking about Zelda and screaming in a corner about Zelda. Um, and, uh, he was in the movie and the Broadway adaptation of Reefer Madness. Yes. Oh. That's 
Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the movie is over, but I want to have a quick discussion about 90s thrillers. I mentioned earlier that we uh, have talked about 90s horror before, I think, in our Dead Alive episode. Yep. And uh, the other day I was watching Basic Instinct and it dawned on me that I love 90s thrillers and we've never talked about 90s thrillers on this podcast. So for me personally, um, when I think of 90s thrillers, I have a top two that my mind will always go to. And those movies are Jacob's Ladder and California. Jacob's Ladder, and they're both different in their own ways, um, but Jacob's Ladder is a mindfuck movie that That's if an incredible you watch movie. that movie, yeah. you will not fucking forget that movie. Uh, I really want to write like a review on that movie, like for the Witchfinger mm-hmm. page. It's on my list of reviews that I really want to write about because like it deals with a lot of... Uh, psychological aspects that I feel a lot of movies didn't really uh, tackle. I guess Altered States uh, kind of went down that road a little bit um, in the 80s, but I I actually feel like Altered States was a little bit, like, um, uh, missed. Not a lot of people, like, really talk about that movie. No, I know. And there's some, like, crazy, like, topics. Like, it deals with the sensory deprivation and, like fucking well it doesn't really go into dmt but like like a lot of like yeah like psychological and psychedelic kind of aspects and it's and the visuals yeah it's pretty fucking um heavy yeah and like i feel like jacob's ladder was like a, the 90s version yeah of alter states except they took it to like the uh the traumatized uh war yeah like the ptsd brain. and that's like a kind of a taboo subject i played on that um, but California oh, that's a great movie. is like one of my favorite fucking 90s thrillers and I've watched it ever since it came out. I've always had the copy on VHS and uh, I've always been a huge fan of David Duchovny and mm. Brad Pitt. Oh, they're t- they're both bonkers. That, that movie is perfect in my opinion. California is an amazing fucking movie. So, okay, I'm, like, hitting myself because... So, I want to talk about Single White Female for a minute because that movie is so... That is a fucking and that I just rewatched that movie, like, a couple years ago. That whole stalker thing was a huge thing in the 90s. Uh I feel like there was a bunch of stalker... Whether it was love affair or, you know, just a general obsession, right? Which was... I don't know if fear was in the 90s or the early 2000s. It was. Right? But then there's this fucking movie, and it's going to literally kill me. First of all, help me with the name. Forrest Gump's Mother. Sally Field. Sally Field plays in the movie. Eye for an eye. Eye for an eye. Key for Sutherland. Boom! Where her daughter calls her and she mm. hears her daughter get raped and murdered. And then she turns into a badass motherfucking. Yep. Fucking bitch mom fucking going to kill his ass. Yep. I saw that in the theaters because I used to have a huge crush on Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, yeah. And I was like, uh, he's like a raper in this movie, but I still want to see Understandable. it. Understandable. But there was like this whole like... There was, like, the revenge movies that, from, like, the 70s and 80s, like, the rape, revenge, kill stuff. But then there was this whole breed of movies where women just stood up for their rights in the 90s. And we talked about this theme already. Mm-hmm. But J-Lo was in one in the early, early 2000s called Enough, where yes, she fights Yes, that movie was awesome. Yeah. Right? I remember that. Uh-huh. Oh, shit, fuck. It is good. Like, yeah? there's all these movies about women, like, Ugh. having enough of men or whoever's bullshit and just tearing down nice. the house. Mm-hmm. No, I never saw that one. I oh! remember the trailer, though. Like, she's, like like boxing she's like practicing and it's j-lo who's cut like the girl is fit, let me tell you, you know something she's I mean? a vampire too she yeah. is eternal yeah oh, yeah i don't know what that woman is doing you but see i do her ponytails are so tight perfect <laughs> sucking her because like she's her in her 50s oldness away yeah and she, it, she looks she tightens the bun and it like smooths her wrinkles out. Le- legit that must be the tightest bun in the universe she's it was like because stunning. she looks fucking amazing still got abs it's working for her yeah it Um, is the blood of virgins it is silence of the lambs i feel like the silence of the the lambs lambs. that movie's like such a joke to me now it it really thrills have you read the book so okay i have the thomas harris book but i haven't read it yet and um i've read hannibal i haven't read since oh okay um so when i was doing my list of 90s thrillers a lot of action movies and crime movies came up that i omitted from my list and i almost 
omitted Silence of the Lambs because I feel like it's just a cop drama. But at the same time, I feel like it kind of can qualify as a thriller because I don't really necessarily lump it in horror, but I wouldn't lump it in crime or action it's kind of in the middle but obviously so, it's yeah. a staple of like the 90s and every scene we've made fun of either drunk or something like we've reenacted so many of the scenes do you know what i mean that, like when i watch it now <laughs> yeah. like, i don't get that same feeling i did when i was younger i know it's it, was, the it was such yeah. a phenomenon yeah. as a movie it fucking shook so many fucking people to their core. It was like the exorcist that, of that. Yeah, like, it got, yeah, like, and the exorcist became a parody of itself when That's people right, were, like, exactly. using it as comedy. And Even it's like, the same thing. Repossessed is, like, I mean, the, yeah. Linda Blair's in it. Yeah, totally. Um, but, like, there, yeah, there were moments that were so uh, ingrained in pop culture that they became something that you could use as comedy yeah. as well. So now it's almost like, wow, well, it's kind of funny, What? But you know what? It still does hold up. And Manhunter is an awesome movie. Yes, if we're I gonna know. talk about that yeah. world, even though it's not nineties, I'm just saying. But also Hannibal, Tough. like the book, that's pretty good. I re- I read it, Fuck. um, and I Sweet read um, though. Red Dragon as well. But I never read the Silence of the Lambs book. Red Dragon was interesting. I didn't read it, but the movie was like I it, don't even remember it. It is my least favorite it is but it is like really fun like the way the guy acts like the guy who's becoming the dragon or is whatever it edward norton no edward, i can't even oh, remember no it's not edward norton he is in that movie isn't he but he's the detective yeah 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 anyways it's yeah it's good but if you but. watch like man like watch manhunter because that's the like that's red dragon based on the book in oh, the I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Red Dragon and Manhunter are the same. Oh, okay. But I don't know. I think Manhunter is superior. Because it doesn't... I mean, it is an 80s movie, so it's like kind of like off topic, but it does... I think it encapsulates the movie a little bit. Yeah. Or the, yes. the idea a bit better. It's much like Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> it's far superior, but, but never also... as recognized as the original. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you busted that line out because I was going to bust out a Pepsi line, but I was like, it's not Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't on me and all those Wayne's World quotes. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Cape Fear. Cape Fear is super. Uh, I love <laughs> Cape Fear. I just watched Cape Fear for the first time, like maybe five years ago, and was blown away. De Niro. De Niro. Motherfucker. Um, the scene where uh, Robert De Niro meets Juliette Lewis in the theater of her school, they improved that entire scene. Shut fact when i learned that i was like wow like you were like robert shit. de niro and juliette man. lewis man like and holy lewis fuck. Is yeah. The fucking man. Yeah. yeah so she we did is the fucking man she is the man um except she's a scientologist so is she yeah she is does she still do her band i don't uh she does still do her band i can't confirm that she's still a scientologist but she's dating the drummer of uh rage against the machine oh good for her yeah he always had nice muscles. he's a pretty babe He's a pretty big. He's a pretty big. He's a pretty big. He had nice he's muscles. Pretty, he's I got big. muscles. I remember his muscles. Yeah, I remember his tattoos and his muscles. Mm. He's a babe. So we talked about Dead Calm earlier. Um, highly recommend. It's a very um, suspenseful, um, terrifying movie if you're afraid of open water. Here's the thing. Now I think I'm remembering something, but it's hard because the 2000s I think of were like yesterday, but they fucking weren't like the oh. early 2000s. Oh, I know. Because I'm thinking like, remember there was that string of movies. It was like Stir of Echoes with Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Um, the one Kiss the Girls with Morgan Freeman yep. when the girls were getting kidnapped mm-hmm. and the guy from Saw was the killer. Yep. The guy from Princess mm-hmm. Bride. Yep. Um, like there was a whole bunch of those, like, uh, there was just a bunch of movies that came out of six cents, like yes. all that kind. Like there was, it was that early 2000s. Yeah. It was right on the cusp, wasn't it? Yeah. Because I think six cents was 1999. Yeah. So it would be, yeah. Like 98, 99. It was but a very still trendy. 90s, still 90s. Yeah. But you're right. It was a very trendy. Coming up to that. Yeah. Cause that is when we came up to what we talked about, I think last time or the time before, which was like Gothica yeah. and all those movies that were like that were right around. Total crap. 
yeah. yeah. Like, trying too hard. Yeah. And, like, again, what you said, like, the 90s were a decade of just trying like, too hard. And there was a lot of movies that were all of the same kind of shit. And it was, that was Holly Berry's time, which is why they probably put her in Gothica. Because, like, Holly Berry had just come off the 90s being, like, the shit, the fucking tits. Like, that mm-hmm. it girl. And then they put her in this, like, fucking I'll have to admit, put her in though, Catwoman too. barf. Are you about to talk oh, about I'm her on Catwoman? I'm never gonna fucking watch that movie. Oh, Catwoman, I will, shit. I refuse to watch that movie. Um, Catwoman but, is Michelle Pfeiffer. That's it. Yeah, that's and right. Eartha Kitt. Eartha yeah. Kitt. Eartha Kitt. Eartha Kitt. Yeah. I want to, hey, do you know that Eartha Kitt song where she's like, I want to be evil. Yeah, yeah I she... want to do the old dress. Her voice is amazing. I, 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 I love, love that, that song. Um, but I just want to say quickly, The Sixth Sense, um, Despite us making fun of uh, Shemalam and Ding Dong, um, <laughs> The Sixth Sense, I still think, is a truly amazing movie. It was good. I did not. I did not. You didn't like it? No, I didn't suspect the whole time. Oh, yeah. No, oh, the no, first time. I, yeah, I, I didn't have no idea. Really and then at the end, I was like, right? Oh, we Actually, talked you know together, what? Did we I remember together? me and Morgan and your sister and Mercedes, we saw in theaters, and do you remember the part where the girl from the OC pukes in the tent? Mm. Mercedes, like, the fucking burst So there are a lot of movies like I mentioned earlier. I like I mentioned earlier about like Silence, Silence of the Lambs that were kind of in between horror and crime and action. But I feel that this movie merits a thriller genre because of the way that it was written and the way that it was shot. I just want to say Jackie Brown. I know it's a heist movie, but it's like yeah. there's a lot of dialogue in it and suspense. <laughs> Which I feel is uh, are the two like main like pivotal aspects of a thriller movie. Like there's no action in it, right? Like at all, and uh, it's mostly dialogue, and you don't know what's gonna happen, and it's like very suspenseful. But I uh, it personally, it's one of my favorite Tarantino movies. So I think uh, right now we're just gonna gush all over Michael Douglas. <laughs> oh, so, so I already have his yeah. Let's get into right Michael now. Douglas because like okay, 90s yeah. thrillers. There's a lot of like '90s guys. Like Kurt Russell was doing some '90s shit. Like we talked about Backdraft earlier. But like blah, Michael blah, blah. Douglas is the overlord of '90s thrillers. He truly is. He, he really is. In like, all he... the sexy movies, being the sexy, creepy guy in all those fucking movies and falling down was a great fucking Dude, movie. Dude, falling where down a is such a serious fucking movie. And uh, Basic Instinct is a great movie. Um, I I watch it maybe every few years, but I rewatched it a few weeks ago and uh, it's, it's a great movie and I always forget that it's Paul Verhoeven. Yeah. Who did it. And uh, which makes sense because he cast her in Total Recall. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Basic Instinct. I remember the first time I watched Basic Instinct, I was like, why would they cast Michael Douglas? Because no right. one wants to see him fucking. Because I always thought that he well, was like atrocious. I don't know. But I think, I'm, I'm sorry. I kind of think he's hot. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, like he's definitely got something about him. Something sometimes. Some only sometimes you're right. You're right. Like, Look at these two 90s. pictures directly beside each other. Not the young one, but he's got on in some photos. He has on like a turtleneck. Yeah, right. When he's he, older, he, like he looks like fucking his dad, and I don't want to be fucking a hundred year old man in a wheelchair. Six, but I know he's one hundred and six now <laughs> yeah. or whatever. But like, um, I think the movie that actually like was like, oh my god, Michael Douglas is actually hot was. Uh, Romancing the Stone. I still haven't seen it. And when I watched it, I was like, I, I get it. I understand. I see. He was adorable in the 70s. He was fucking adorable. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, like there's some movies that I'm just like, like fucking, um, War of the Roses. That's a, uh, that I started it, but I never finished it. Incredible. Was Danny, that also Danny directed? DeVito directed that I was going to say, I, I thought that Danny DeVito directed yeah. that. But that's not like a 90s movie, but like for 90s, like Falling Down, Basic Instinct, Fatal Attraction Dude, is Fatal like Attraction. But that's not 90s. It's no, 80s. it is. It's no, 80s. it's 80s. It's 87. Yeah, oh, it's 80s. oh, is yeah. it? Oh, fuck. You know what's not though? Wall Street. Which Wall Street! Yes! Yes! yes. So yes. good. Dude, Wall that Street is amazing. so fucking good. Holy I just fuck. watched Wall, Tr- Wall Street for the first time like last year and I was like, how the fuck have I not seen this already? He's such a great powerhouse. Holy mm-hmm. shit, yes. Um, yeah, oh wait, The Game. Let's okay. just say that for a second. That movie is fucking incredible. Let's talk about The Game. I I saw The Game in theaters. 
Um, and I recently acquired it and I haven't rewatched it yet. Um, but when I was doing my research online about Michael Douglas, so many people fucking like say the game is like batshit awesome. You no no no. That movie is fucking incredible. It's so good. It is suspenseful and a mind fuck and it like yeah, no, it's it's a fucking incredible movie. Watch it. Have you seen it? No. We should watch it together because oh. I, I have it now. So <laughs> you lost. Yeah, I know. I honestly like everybody on the internet are like, yeah, basic instinct, falling down. But the game is yeah. the shit. It is. And I saw I made my mom take me see to take me to the theaters to see it, but I, that's the last time I saw it. I don't even remember it. It's at um all. I just remember him in a limo. That's it's okay, it's it's like a uh, a movie that's kind of like he's uh <sighs> I'm trying to think of, like, how to, like, analogize it or, like, other movies that are like it. It's, like, I don't know. It's a, it is a, it's a bit of a mind fuck for sure. Like, mm-hmm. he's rich, and then there's some, like... Doesn't somebody, like, his brother... Um, there's, like, some almost total recall aspects of it, but then there's also, like... Like, he has to fight for his life to beat this game or something, right? Yeah, but it's, like, the game is, like, real life, but it's, like, but is it? Oh, I like that. Ooh, yeah. I'm into that. Ooh, and no, yeah. it, it actually, it's it's a fantastic movie. There's your boyfriend, P.S. Yeah, so we are, we finished Demon Knight, and so we just decided to start Bordello of Blood because I have the DVD that has both movies on it. And yeah, I thought Corey Feldman yeah, was yeah. really fucking hot in Bordello of Blood. <laughs> oh my God. Um, also, um, the guy who directed Bordello of Blood produced Demon Knight. Um... And a uh, fun fact about this movie is uh, apparently making this movie was a shit show because of Dennis Miller. And Dennis Miller was really annoying and hard to work with and kept on uh, like improvising his lines. And they were like, can you just stick to the script? <laughs> just fucking and say then what he we tell just you kept on say. like refusing to show up on the set on time. Because do you remember when Dennis Miller had his own show? No. Uh, he yes. had his own show. Okay, let me tell and you something about so, Dennis. I love Dennis Miller. Yeah, like, I know you I, do. And, like, all the shit that is in here, like, he has the best fucking lines. He's the funniest fucking part of this movie. Fun fact, Robert Zemeckis wrote Bordell of Blood. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote yeah. it when he graduated from college in 1973. Oh, my God. So isn't that kind of funny that both, like, Bordello of Blood and Demon Knight were written, like, dec- like a decade before, like... Decades before the fucking movies I just came don't out. get why they felt the need to do this. Like, I was going to say that earlier. I don't understand why they felt so strong they needed to make a trilogy that they just took movies and mishmashed them together. And what? Who told them they had to be doing this trilogy Right? Idea? Or, who cares? how about this? There were... This is, this, this is like a part of the fucking podcast that we didn't even get into. There was like 10 years of fucking comic book stories why don't you just elaborate on one of those fantastic comic Touché. book stories to like turn it into a movie like there was so much content going into those comic books in the 50s i don't understand why they couldn't just be like let's right because any any one of those stories is a great storyline that they can yeah, build a absolutely whole movie absolutely and i'm sure that there were some fantastic ones they didn't yeah somebody... it just totally blows yeah. my mind and then they like put them all together so in my mind Watching Bordello of Blood, I was expecting demons. Yeah. Because in my mind, it would be the follow up, mm. which would be demons. Like, there, it just wasn't. I don't know why they did that. I don't understand the meaning behind this fucking. It's not a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not, like I, I have this like the DVD that has like both movies, and I'm always like, yeah, obviously I'm gonna watch Demon Knight instead right? of fucking Bordello of Blood. It was like, what can we put the most pussy and titties? Yeah, yeah, like true. and blood because that's like you know the holy trinity of fucking mm-hmm. pussy, titties, and blood. <laughs> In pussy and titties and blood, we trust. Suck titties, spend fitties. <laughs> Pet kitties. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Um, didn't we make that up? Uh, no, it's like an internet thing. No, we trademarked that it's going on a t-shirt. Fuck okay. you guys. Which finger 2019 suck yeah. titties, pet kitties, <laughs> pet kitties, motherfuckers. Yeah, that's right. Dot <laughs> com. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> but back to 90s thrillers, I made a very short list of teen 90s thrillers and fear is oh. one of them. And, um... <laughs> 
<laughs> Nicole forever. I will forever love that movie. The Crush. Oh, yeah. Carrie Elwes is in that, too. Alicia Silverstone. I got, I got my period. Aren't they all kind of the fucking same? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Poison it's, Ivy. It's the obsession thing. Like, no, like I know. you were talking and, about, like, yeah. movies about, like, women or men that are, like, obsessed. And, like, it's, so like, strange. the stalker yeah. kind of thing. It's, like, yeah. was this, like, a phenomenon that, like, somehow became the forefront of, like, society at that time was like oh stalkers they're real it's a thing yeah really though Weird. i don't know who I... was the one with who was the famous one with the stalker there was around that time it was a woman and jodie foster yeah. jodie foster had that stalker remember and it was making no. news all over the place oh Jodie Foster. She's the one from Sons of the Lambs. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was her. She was getting fucking so, all sorts of creepy mail and shit from some dude who was stalking her. And I remember it was making news at that time. I'm not saying that's why. I'm just saying I remember yeah, that being a news story. Yeah, people are I creeps. wonder. It is a really strange uh, coincidence. But it's funny that, yeah, these three movies, like from the 90s, Fear. Well, I guess like Fear, uh, Mark Wahlberg is the crazy one. But The Crush and Poison Ivy are always... Uh, I always like, like jumble those two together because it's well, Poison the, the Ivy. Is that the one? Drew that, Barrymore. That's the one where you see Kevin Bacon's penis. No, that's uh, that's Wild that's Things. Wild oh, things. sorry. Another wild movie Things like is that. another '90s thriller that actually I haven't seen in a really long time, but that came up a lot in my list, and I actually yeah. kind of want to rewatch it because I remember like the storyline being kind of interesting. But Poison Ivy is the one with Drew Barrymore and Tom Skerritt. Tom, Tom Skerritt. Skerritt. They get it on, man. Drew Barrymore really? Tom Scare like get Tom Scare the guy that you just want to like wrap your arms around and like, He's like give a, him a big hug and she a did it. After yeah, they a fought. Day. They like naked like fuck. Tom Scare standing up over a piano. I love Poison Ivy. That's like Poison Ivy, The Crush and Fear were like my like teenager. The teen obsession uh, the movie. The teen it's obsession movies. Weird. Like I always like lump those three movies together, but Fear is like on top of that list. Oh god, yeah, Fear I can't watch it so. Do you remember upsetting. like when they first see the guys like when they go to that club and Alyssa Milano is like, "Ooh, like check out that guy." And it's like that fucking guy <laughs> was like the biker looking dude who's like, it's good, it's good. And I'm like why did they cast that actor to be in the movie like I always thought that it was weird that she was like ooh like like she's like oh getting all like like hot when she sees this like fucking disgusting decrepit biker looking <laughs> man Fuck. super weird but I just want to mention one last movie that is a movie that came up a lot in my search that um, is the only one that I haven't seen that I, w- I do want to watch eventually is Raising Cain. Oh, Raising Cain. I've never seen never it. Seen Isn't it. Um, John Lithgow? I was about to say that John Lithgow. Yeah, so movie, yeah. I have, uh, I, I need to watch that movie because uh, John Lithgow is awesome and I love 90s thrillers and it's always, it always comes up hmm. when you search 90s yeah, thrillers. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to watch it. I hear good things. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fucking A. All right then. There are good things about Raisin King. Cruel Intentions. That's another yeah. weird oh, sex yeah, yeah, yeah. Another 90s. And like Ryan Philippe yeah. or Felipe or whatever Dude. the fuck his name. Stop it, Josh. Listen, I'm just going to get into some, some names right now who disappeared. Josh Hartnett. Yes. Oh, yeah. He was. What happened to him? Did he die? Why are you making died. a sad face? No, he did no, not. He did. Josh Hartnett didn't die. Who am I thinking of? You're thinking of like Heath De- Ledger. No, I was gonna say Devin Sawa, but oh. no, he's okay. sorry. Yeah, Devin Sawa and Heath Ledger passed away. No, Devin Sawa. No, Devin, Devin Sawa's still alive. alive. No, I'm thinking what? of what John- the fuck? I'm thinking of Jonathan Brandis. Who the Jonathan fuck Taylor is Thomas? still alive and who's dead? Josh Hartnett is definitely. Josh still Hartnett alive. is a bad. Thirty Days of Night. That was a great movie. Such a good movie. Um. Also, Josh Chris Hartnett. Klein. Chris Klein from the '90s. Oh, I remember Oof. him. He's like Beefy. kind of like the poor man's like good Chris Pratt a little bit. Now. Like you, a little fucking bit. nailed it. Like a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, what did happen? Was he in, he was in um, American Pie? Yes. Yeah. The beefy guy. Yes, I remember him. We just Mm. did that. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Because the 90s bred a bunch of really attractive, like, you thought would be the up and coming George Clooney or whatever, like with all the Ryan Felipe's and Mm -hmm. all this. This old dude? Let me see. Chris Klein? Oh. (laughs) Ah! Ah! Is this the the fuck? No, it's with a K. It's with a K. Oh, okay. Please Google Chris Klein without a K I was like, and just see what she pulled up. No one's coming up under Chris Klein. Yes, me to pulls up this like seventy-five-year-old like, man. Oh, Chris, like the last name with a K. Oh no, no, no. Yeah. he does not look good. 
Oh, he doesn't. He got ugly. Oh, that guy! Yeah. Oh, okay. That's American he... Pie. Yeah, he's Okay, American Pie. I remember him. <laughs> so yeah, the 90s had, like, <laughs> Joshua Jackson, for example. Like, Oh, yeah, but he was in... Dude. Dawson's, Dawson's Creek. Dawson's that guy. Creek. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. Why this song is playing, but... Also, though, Josh Hartnett, for me personally, I, I, I like always um, associate him with uh, Virgin Suicides. Yeah, me too. Love that movie. Pretty good. Fucking love that movie. That guy's too. ears, though, they bugged me. Okay, fine. So he's not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that would and be a deal in, breaker for me. I'm he sorry. was in O. When they when they made a movie like out Othello? of Othello, yeah. Oh, oh. And it was and it was. <laughs> he was in uh, two basketball players. They modernized it, and it was a sexy, sexy film. What's with the giant, the dudes with these the big giant nose, like, nose skull things. nose rings? You know what? I also was noticing that because all the posse. And they got those kangaroo that. hats. Yeah. Also, guys in the '90s pierced their belly buttons a lot. Yeah, yeah. That one guy from that band. First of all, Cisco, but the guy with the spiky hair from that band, that butterfly, come my lady, come my Oh, come, crazy town? Oh, no, you're yeah. giving me bad, bad, bad memories. <laughs> that's a 90s. No, that's early 2000s, yeah. I think. Yeah. Crazy town. The never ending episode. I know. It's yeah. actually only, we're only at two hours. Two whores. Two whores. Two whores. <laughs> that's what's right. That, but what's that word for women that ends with S? Whores? <laughs> <laughs> and I meant E S S, like governess. Yes. Duchess. Governess. Hyress. Countess. Yeah, highness. Now we've got words coming out, and we're going to wrap it up. Oh, <laughs> wrap it up, B. Yeah, wrap it up for on the go. We're going to make like a penis and wrap it up. That's right. Okay. Well, thanks for listening to us um, drool about Billy Zane. Oh, yes. That carried and away about a million other things. 90s thrillers. 90s. Yeah, the 90s and, were a magical time. Uh, demons are pretty cool, okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye bye, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>